equilibrium notes, we start with weak acids and bases. And these guys, they are considered weak because unlike the strong acids and bases that completely ionize, these guys only partially ionize. And so when you write the equation for the ionization of a weak acid or a weak base, let's say, um, you know, the acetic acid, that's the one that everybody seems to just love. Um, this is the acidic hydrogen right here, so that's the one that's going to be ionized. These hydrogens are part of the acetate polyatomic ion, so they're not going to be part of the ionization process, and they are not um, acidic in nature. And so what's going to happen is, instead of having a unidirectional arrow, we're going to have a bidirectional arrow. Because when you dissolve acetic acid in water, what you end up getting is a mixture of the acetic acid together, hydrogen ions, and the acetate ion. And this is considered to be a weak acid because this reaction does not go to completion like the strong guys do. It kind of bounces back and forth and reaches that equilibrium that we've talked about before. And because it doesn't completely ionize, this is also considered to be a weak electrolyte. It will only partially conduct electricity. And you can write um, equilibrium expressions for these guys that have a value of K, and it's Ka if it's an acid, Kb if it's a base, and you would write the equilibrium expression just like I taught you, where K, in this case we're dealing with an acid, so Ka is equal to the concentration of the react of the products, oh, gotta make sure I say that right, divided by the concentration of the reactants. And so this is the equilibrium expression for a weak acid. And this is actually, this is the equilibrium expression for pretty much all weak acids. So like you can kind of write a skeleton equilibrium expression for a weak acid and say that you have hydrogen ion times the concentration of the conjugate base, which is gonna be the acid once it has lost its hydrogen over the acid, the hydrogen with the acid, acidic anion, whatever it might be. And you can compare these two and see how this can be considered a skeleton of this. And the reason I show you this is because the majority of weak acids are going to have this set up with your Ka. Uh, and the K value, this guy right here, it tells you how much the acid or the base is going to ionize. If you have a higher value for K, then the reaction is gonna proceed more in uh, towards the products, in the products direction. Whereas if you have a very small K, well then you're gonna stay mostly in reactants. Well, what classifies a high or a small K? Well, if K is the ratio of products to reactants, if you have any K that is less than one, then the reactants are gonna be favored. And if your K value is greater than one, then your products are going to be favored. So for any K value that is, if K is greater than one, then you have a strong acid or base. And if you have a K value of less than one, then you're gonna have a weak acid and base. And most Ka values are gonna be and typically something times 10 to the negative 4, 10 to the negative 5, um, all the way up to 10 to, you know, negative 15. You know, it can, it can get pretty high. Well, that's, I guess that's negative numbers are pretty low, but you know what I mean. Um, and then the cool thing is, or y'all might not think this is cool, but I think it's fascinating, um, that if you have a di or a tri protic basic acid or base, that there are going to be multiple K values for each um, hydrogen or hydroxide that gets released. So let me show you how that works. Um, let's take uh, phosphoric acid. Here, I'm going to erase what's up at the top and use this for phosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid is H3PO4, and it's a weak acid, a very tasty weak acid, I might add. Um, and it's going to undergo a first ionization where it releases a hydrogen ion, and then you have this like dihydrogen phosphate ion. And this is the first ionization, and this is going to have a K a one value of, I think I have it in a book somewhere. Sorry, I'm going to flip pages. Uh, this has a Ka value of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 
three, and this I just look up in a book. You can find this in just about the in the back of just about every single chemistry book you will ever encounter. Well, then we have a second ionization where this dihydrogen phosphate ion, which is an amphoteric compound, it can both accept hydrogens and turn back into phosphoric acid, or it can donate one of these two hydrogens. Uh, and so I'm going to write that. So the H2PO4 ion is another weak acid where it can give up another hydrogen and then become the hydrogen phosphate ion with a negative two charge. And this has a Ka because it's the second ion ionization. It's a Ka2 value. And that is 6.2 times 10 to the negative eight. And notice that this number, this Ka value, the second one, is a lot smaller than the first one. And if you come back over here, this makes sense because you're trying to pull a proton from an ion that already has a negative charge. And so while this will happen, it's not going to happen near as much as the first ionization. And you'll see this trend continue when we move on to the third ionization where the hydrogen phosphate ion gets rid of its very last hydrogen. So I'll put that, I'll kind of try to squeeze it in right here. So you have the HPO4, the hydrogen phosphate ion. It is going to ionize that last hydrogen, leaving behind the phosphate ion. And this will have a Ka3 value, because it is the third um, ionization of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 13. So you can see it went up um, kind of by about the same amount that it went up from Ka1 to Ka2. It went up by power of 5. Well, I guess you could say that went down by a power of 5. Uh, but again, same reason. Now we have an even more negative ion trying to remove that proton. And it's going to be even more difficult and it's going to happen even less often but it will still happen a little bit. And then the, the bases that have multiple hydroxides, they work the same way. They have a KB1 and a KB2. So what does all this mean? I kind of put it all together. Well, water can be, it can ionize itself. And there's gonna be a number that pops up here. They're gonna be like, oh, that's where this all comes from. So just stay with me on this. So let's say you have, you know, a beaker full of water and, and you take two water molecules and they are going to ionize themselves to some extent. And you can also write this with one water molecule ionizing into the hydroxide and the hydrogen ion. This is acceptable as well. This also shows the auto ionization of water. And uh, it does, you know, it ionizes on its own and it has its very own K value. Um, of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, of course, at room temperature and other temperatures, it might be a little different, um, although I, I don't know why it would be, but, you know, whatever. Um, and so the K value of this, the, the equilibrium expression for the autoionization of water is going to be the hydroxide ion concentration times the hydrogen ion concentration but you're not going to include these liquid water reactants. And the reason for that, if you remember when we first learned about general equilibrium, liquids and solids are not included in equilibrium expressions. And so because of that, we're only gonna include the ions in our Kw value. But if you notice, this is equal to one times 10 to the negative 14. Well, the pH scale ranges from one to 14. And this is why it's the autoionization of water. Basically, one out of every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. If you had this many water molecules, one of them would ionize. And so it doesn't happen very often at all, but it does happen. And with acids and bases, the ionization happens more often, but we use water as the, I guess, basis of comparison. Um, and so, like, let's say that you were dealing with a compound that is not, you know, class, I mean, it is classically considered an acid, but it's not one that you can, like, look up a value for because it's not one that you would, well, it is one that you would encounter a lot. I'm not really sure how to explain this. Um, but when you think of ammonium, you're not going to look in the back of a book and find the Ka value for ammonium. What you will find 
is the Kb value for ammonia because that's the compound that you're more likely to encounter. So let's say you wanted to know, okay, is ammonia a stronger base or is ammonium a stronger acid? And what I mean by that, let me erase what I got on here. Um, <clears throat> you have ammonia and it can donate a proton, uh, release a proton, act like an acid, um, to form ammonia. And so this is the acid, and this would be the base. And so we want to know, well, which one of these two guys is stronger? Is ammonium a stronger acid, or is ammonia a stronger base? And you can do that by comparing K values. And whichever K value is bigger, that'll tell you which one is the stronger one. But to find the K value, the Ka value for ammonium, you need to use the Kb value for ammonia. You have to be very enunciating with this in order to be able to you know, know what it is that you're talking about. So the Kb value for ammonium is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. And that's for ammonia. But if we wanted to know the Ka value for NH4, well, we can use this right here. And so basically we would say, okay, well, Ka is equal to, divide both sides by Kb, and my Kb's cancel. And so Kw was 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divided by 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5, and this is going to work out to, um, sorry, let me plug this in real quick. I could estimate this, but my brain is kind of fried. It's the end of the day, so. Um, you end up with 6.67 times 10. Actually, I guess we're only allowed two sig figs here. So 6.7 times 10 to the negative 10. So this is the Ka value for NH4+. Plus. And you can see, comparing the Ka and the Kb values, that Kb is higher, which is why we consider this to be the base and the NH4 plus is actually the conjugate acid and not the other way around. We don't consider this an acid and this is the conjugate base because the conjugate is always going to be the one that's weaker. So whichever one is weaker is going to be the conjugate and whichever one is stronger is the one that's going to be considered the acid or the base. Mm, moving on. So is an aqueous solution of NH2PO4 I'm sorry, Na2HPO4, acidic or basic. Well, let's look at what we have. This is a salt, um, an ionic compound. And so my Na2HPO4 is going to ionize because it is a soluble compound. All sodium compounds are soluble um, into two sodium ions and this hydrogen phosphate ion. So I'm going to look at these two ions and see if either of them have acidic or basic properties. Well, sodium I know is a neutral ion because it comes from sodium hydroxide. And the cation of any strong base is neutral. So I'm going to have to look at this guy, HPO4 with a 2 minus. Well, HPO4. is an amphoteric compound. It can be an acid by donating a proton and becoming H plus and PO4 three minus, or it can be a base by accepting a proton. So let me put in a little plus H right in there. And we'll get the H2PO4 ion. So if it goes this direction, it's accepting the base and it's acting, at, I'm sorry, bleh, accepting a proton and acting as a base. And if it goes this direction, it is donating that proton and acting as an acid. Well, remember what I told you on the last slide, to know which one is going to be stronger, is this going to be more acidic or more basic, compare the Ka value of when this compound is acting as an acid and compare it to the Kb value of when this guy is acting as a base. So we have two separate reactions we need to consider here. So the first one is when hydrogen phosphate acts as an acid by donating the hydrogen ion 
and we can look in the back of any chemistry book and find that the Ka value for this, and this was actually on uh, a couple slides ago. So this one has a Ka value of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 13. So this is a really small value. This is a very, very weak acid. Um, and then the other reaction that we have is, um, remember we can look up Ka values, but we can't look up Kb values. But So we have a hydrogen ion being added to this hydrogen phosphate to make an H2PO4 ion. Well, the Ka of the reverse reaction of this is equal to, when the H2PO4 gives up its proton, is equal to 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. Well, this is the Ka value. We want to know when this particular compound is acting like a base. So the way that we figure out Kb is by taking Kw, 1 times 10 to the negative 14, and dividing it by Ka, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 and plug this into your trusty little calculator. Um, yes, you can estimate this, but like I said, it's the end of the day, so I'm just gonna punch buttons. And I get one point, uh, let's see, we're allowed two sig figs here, so 1.6, so Kb equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7. So to know whether or not the acid or the base is going to prevail, compare your Ka of this compound to the Kb. And you can see that the Kb is significantly larger, and so that means that this particular solution is going to be basic. And that is all I'm going to do for part 2. Obviously there is going to be a part 3, so stay tuned.